Hey mamas, it is your crazy essentials tutor, Anita, here um, to talk to you about how you can set up your child's um, personal essentials notebook. Um, there are certain things that they're going to need in class every week, and I feel like putting all of it in a binder is just the easiest way for them to have everything all together and for it to be easy and portable. And so I'm just gonna kind of talk to you a little bit. I've had some questions, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how to do that. And um, I've never really done a video or anything like this before, so I apologize if it's a little jumpy or weird. So here you go. Um, in order to set up your own child's essentials binder or essentials notebook, what you're gonna need is your EEL guide, which is here. And for those of you who are new, you bought this wrapped in plastic at Practicum. And I sent out a document explaining to you how to set it up with all of the various um, tabs and, and all of that. So um, I do think this is a three inch binder. And so it's kind of a monstrosity, but this is everything that you need to do the EEL or the first 45 minute portion that we do in class and then also to do it at home. So it's all here. And then you're also gonna need the student book from the IW Ancient History Based Writing Lessons. Um, you need the student book. When I did Bowden's, I accidentally used the teacher book and that's a little different. And so I'm probably gonna have to redo it. So don't be like Anita and use the teacher book, use the student book. And so <laughs> um, <clears throat> what I did, for Bowden's book was, um, well, let me talk. There are a couple of um, different trains of thought with setting up your child's notebook. I chose to do Bowden's weekly because I feel like that's just gonna work best for his personality. But a lot of what I see um, on like CC Connected and on the internet is that people tend to divide it up using tabs like this. Um, by subject. And so the subjects that they do are charts, sentences, editing, writing, and vocabulary. Those are usually the five subjects. Um, the charts, the sentences, and the editing, those resources can be found in your EEL guide. And then the writing and the vocabulary, all of that is from the IEW that we use. Um, and this works fine and you can find tons of videos on YouTube showing you how to set up a binder like this. Um, I just, I, have, I feel like doing it weekly is going to work better for Bowden. And so this is how Bowden's binder is set up. Um, I used a two inch binder, I think, for him. Um, and I just did a fun little cover with some of his favorite things on it and his name. Um, in the front pocket, I have an analytical task sheet. And this I ordered from Office Depot and it's laminated and I have one of these for all of you. And so this is really sturdy and I'm hoping that it will hold up really well with um, dry erase marker and just being used starting week three. We're going to use this bad boy every week in class and you're going to use it just about every day at home. So I'm hoping that it's going to hold up really well. Um, so there it is, and I've got this for you, and I will give it to you either at our powwow with Poodawa or our parent orientation open house meeting. So this is yours, and I'm going to keep it in the front of his binder so it's there and it's easy for him to access. And then I did um, the zipper pouch. I've got an eraser for everybody for you to use with your dry erase markers, and I've got dice for everybody that your child can keep in their zipper pouch and bring to class every week. And the dice, of course, we're going to use for math. And then the dry erase marker we're going to use in class on things like this. And, um, and then I have markers, but th we're probably going to go through them pretty quick. So I'd rather you buy your own. Um, I think I ordered these from Amazon. And for writing on these little charts and things, the finer the tip, the better. Um, so these are, that's not really focusing, sorry. Um, but these are ultra fine tip and that brand is called the Board Dudes. So these are the Board Dudes ultra fine tip markers. And so I'm hoping that these will last us a while. 
So I've got those in his zipper pouch, and I'll probably throw some pens or pencils or something in there for him to use too, even though we really don't use a lot of that type of thing in class. All right, the next thing I have in here, and there's lots of page protectors, so buy you some of these. Um, this is our IEW writing schedule, and I will also give this to you either at our powwow with Poudoua or for our parent open house. But this has the writing schedule that we'll use for IW, and I've added our community's dates to it. So you will see exactly what we're doing and when we're doing it. So I've got this in here. And then I've got just a few pages, a little abbreviation page. This is page 396 from the EEL guide. This is the broad scope and sequence. And there again, this isn't stuff Bowden will necessarily need, but I like having it in there if I wanna to flip to it real quick. This is page 20 in the EEL guide. Um, this is a week at a glance. So this kind of tells you each day of the week what you can do at home with day one being our time together at community day. So this kind of breaks down for you what to do with your child at home. This is on page 24 in the EEL guide. These are the weekly practice sentences that your child will use on their analytical task sheet. And of course, you'll see this starts week three. This is page 435 in the EEL guide. And of course, 436, there's the back. And then just a couple of little cheat sheets. This is from week three, page 58 and 59, just cheat sheets on how to diagram. And then I've also got just an extra copy of an analytical task sheet, just in case we need one. And then I have numbered tab dividers going to week 24. And so whatever week we're on, he could just flip to that week. Um, I got a little anal because the page protectors were bigger than the page dividers. So if, I don't know if you can see, I taped the divider to a page protector to give it a little bit of extra length so that it would go out past the page protector so that he could actually flip easily to the page. And so behind each tab, what I have are the charts that we're going to do for that week. and his IEW checklist for his writing assignment. And so um, for week one, we're gonna use chart A. And so I have the copied the filled out, the completed version from the EEL guide and the blank version um, so that he can, when he's learning it, he has something to look at but then we can just take this out and he can fill it out from memory. And so um, if you have a left-handed child, you're gonna wanna flip this so that the blank page that your child is gonna be writing on is on the left and they're not having to fight with the rings in the middle. But I have a righty and so his um, blank sheets are on the right so that it'll be easy for him to fill it out and he'll have something to look at. And so um, there is a page in the guide, and this is it, page 397. Sorry, there's a bad glare. Page 397, and this breaks down which charts we're working on each week. And so I put charts A and B in the week one tab of the binder. And then when we move on to week two, he'll just move those two charts to week two so he can review A and B, and then he can start working on the new charts, C and D. First tour students probably only will need to work on A, C, and E. If you can get those three, your first tour, you're doing A, okay, A, C, and E. Those are the three you need to work on. Um, any extra is just extra for the first tour. So yeah, so behind each week, I have got the charts that they need and their checklist. The checklist is what's here in your IEW Ancient History Based Writing Lesson book. And so I can look at this schedule and I can see that for week one, we're gonna be doing lesson one and lesson two. 
So I flipped to lesson two in here. And typically the last page of the lesson is the checklist. And so you can make a copy. Um, some moms take this book apart. Um, I cannot bring myself to do that. So I'm not taking this book apart. I just make copies. But some people take the book apart and they cut this little, the holes off and they put this in page protectors, but Anita can't handle that. So we just make copies. And so you can see behind each tab, I've got the chart they're gonna need. I flip to week six real quick. So here's the chart for week six, working on conjunctions. And you can see this is where I accidentally made the copies from the teacher guide and not the student guide. So that big watermark is on there. And you can see it's just kind of a little bit smaller. They kind of put it in a box. So I'll probably go back and make the copies from the student book so that it's um, just a little bit cleaner for him. <clears throat> um, and then as we work on our writing assignments throughout the week, we will just put our rough draft or whatever, we'll just slide it right in this page protector with our checklist so that everything's together. And the finished paper can go in this page protector. And when he's sewing it, and then when he brings this binder to class, he's got his paper, he's got everything that he needs to turn in for the week. So that's that. Um, that's how I've got his binder set up, like I said. Um, at the end of the book, uh-oh. Sorry, I've got a tab that popped out here. At the very end of the book, in the back, I put the two trivium tables. So this is his um, English grammar. These are just some of the charts. Like this is chart A. They're just all kind of condensed in here, which is really nice. And then the quid et quo. Um, unless you're a tour two or tour three, you don't even need to pop this bad boy open. So. First tour mamas repeat after me. I will not use this this year. Um, it'll be nice for you to have, and you can reference it towards the end of the year when we're looking at it in class. But um, this is not necessary for you to have and use if you're a first tour parent, first tour student. Um, but these are just nice resources, and so I've stuck them in the back of his binder so that he has them if he needs them. Um, Essentials is in and of itself a complete language arts program and so it does include spelling and editing. Um, the editing exercises look like this and they are filed away in the itinerary section of the EEL guide behind each week. So if you flip to week one, you're gonna flip past the lesson and you're gonna see your editing exercises. So you copy this and then you just fold it on the dotted line. So your child can edit and then flip it open and check their editing. Um, I was very diligent and I made all of these copies and I had them filed by week in Bowden's binder. And then I got to looking at it, and the editing exercises are scripture, which is great. But I feel like they're a little too complicated for him and his ability being a first tour kiddo. And so I'm going to show you the alternative that I'm using, and it is this. Um, this is the Daily Language Review Books. I think I found this for less than $15 on uh, Amazon. Um... And this is, you know, he's in fourth grade, so I bought the fourth grade book. And you can see it's just, it's got the day. And so it's just half a sheet with just some general, like, English grammar. There's some spelling stuff. He's got sentences to correct. Um, here's the past tense use of verbs. So it's just really simple, um, quick, easy editing. It's still editing and the English language and grammar review, it's just not quite as time consuming and difficult as the scripture memory that comes with the program. Um, we're just going to do this four days a week. So you can see the Friday setup's a little bit different than the Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday setup. And so I just made copies of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday pages. And um, I put those in a separate binder for him to work on. I had it all in this 
um, along with like other things. And then I was like, gosh, that's just getting too cumbersome. I'm going to put in here only what he needs to bring on community day. Um, extra work like this that he doesn't actually have to have in class. I have put in a separate binder for him to keep at home and just do um, with his regular schoolwork. Um, so yeah, there's also um, on CC Connected a really great editing exercise set of pages that's based on this Our Mother Tongue. Um, some mom with lots of extra time and like crazy smarts took this book and put together some good English review pages um, with some editing work and stuff like circle the subject and underline the predicate and all of that that goes with the English grammar work. And that, like I said, it's on CC Connected. If you go to CC Connected in the Essentials tier and just search OMT for Our Mother Tongue in the search bar, it should pop up. But if you have trouble, let me know and I'll try to send it to you. Um, that would probably be great for a second or third tour student who's familiar with the lingo and all of that. Um, I'm just sticking with this for my first tour kiddo because this seems easy enough and not too overwhelming for him. Um, Essentials also has a spelling component. If you're not happy with your spelling program at home or you really want to stick with theirs, um, it is all the way in the back. And I hope I can do this one-handed. But the spelling lists are all the way back here in the very back, I think. So you should be able to find, um, yeah, there they are. So the spelling lists are here. Um, these spelling lists came from this book, Spelling Plus. And so there again, I plan on using this with both of my kids. Um, these are the thousand words that are used the most in writing. So we're gonna do this at home with both of my kiddos. This should take your kid through about sixth grade. And so I think this is a great program. It tells you how to teach it and it's got the word list and everything. So this is gonna be the same as what's in the essentials guide. They use these lists to break this down by week. So there again, I've made copies of this and I have it in Bowden's separate, like do at home folder, his binder, not what he's gonna bring to class every week. And then um, one last thing. These are the books that I sent to you in the email about um, the suggested reading. Um, and these are spelled out on this schedule. They're all the way down here, the literature suggestions down here on the side. So these accompany the IEW writing. Um, these first three about Gilgamesh are some really cool like picture books that um, you, you could use as read alouds or have your child read on their own. Um, it kind of depends just on your child's preferences, but I was going to kind of go over these. These would be great read alouds or your child could read them on their own. They're all three picture books. You can see they're kind of thin. Um, this Greek myths this is probably not something you're just going to want to hand to your child and be like, here, read this, because it's really long. There's a lot to it, um, but you might want to just pick and choose some of your favorite Greek myths or look through the uh, IAW Ancient History book and see which ones are referenced, and you could read those to your child or, you know, whatever, but that's that. Um, and then... I think we're all familiar with these fabulous Who Was books. I love these. These are super kid-friendly, and they can read these on their own. Bowden read a couple of these last year, and I know some of the other kids did too. So these are probably on level, or maybe even a little bit easier than level for some of our older kiddos. Um, easy to read at home. Great. Great books. And then these other three um, might be better as read-alouds, um, unless your child is just like, you know, a reader at heart and just loves to read. Um, 
I, I know the bronze bow is one and probably the golden goblet maybe but I know the bronze bow is one they do in the challenge programs these are great books um, so we will probably the Tices will do these as read alouds and not as um, independent reading for Bowden because um, that might just be a little too much for him and then last one this is again just lots of little stories by Rudyard Kipling who also wrote the Jungle Book um, there again this is just a lot of reading you might want to pick some of your favorites and there's an illustrated version of this that your kids might enjoy for read alouds especially if you're reading with little ones so again don't be like Anita and just order the book, order the illustrated version, because I think you and your family will enjoy it a little bit more. So I hope that answered your questions about how to set up your essentials binder for your child. And so you can just keep in mind that this sheet I'm going to give you, this sheet I'm going to give you, and the dice and the eraser I am also going to give you. So you just get the binder, the page protectors, and the zipper pouch and make your copies. And if your child comes every week with their binder and their student book, they will be set. That is all they will need in class. Anything else I will provide for them. So their binder with the charts and their analytical task sheet that we'll start using on week three and they'll be good to go so i hope that this was helpful hope y'all don't mind being in my crazy bedroom um looking at all my crazy stuff so <clears throat> hopefully you found this helpful and if you have any questions you can let me know i hope to see all of y'all soon Bye bye